A few days ago, I started a test. It was to compare Brains versus Luxor firmware, and it's been an interesting overall learning process. It really has, and there's been a few things that have stood out, some learning lessons that hopefully you'll be able to take away uh, in today's video if you're a home miner, and if you're looking to utilize a firmware to get better bang for your buck, if you will, out of your S19, or whether it's a Pro, J Pro, or XP. In this instance, in today's video, what we're testing was two S19 Pro models, 110 terahash, that we had acquired for fraction mining. And a lot of the reason for this test was to get an idea of which one of these two firmware companies we were gonna be utilizing for the entire operation for fraction mining, about 30 to 40 petahash, and that continuing to expand over the course of time alongside of using that firmware for our business partners that we also host at our facility. So it was a really important test in order to see which one of these makes the most sense and which one of these are we going to utilize moving forward. So with that said, we're going to break down a lot of the features that are available within both. Uh, and we're going to kind of in the end see who the winner is with overall uh, pros versus cons to their overclocking firmware. That said, if you're new here, my name is Alex, talk about crypto, crypto news, crypto passive income. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. You enjoyed this video, smash up the like, but without further ado, let's jump in the video. All right, now before we get into breaking down each one of these companies and then breaking down their pools and their firmware, first starting off, you have to realize that both of these companies are quite large when it comes to mining pools themselves. Now, if you look at the current stats of the top mining pools for Bitcoin mining, obviously Foundry Digital is one of the largest. It's an institutional primarily based mining pool behind that. Obviously, Amp Pool uh, does make quite a bit of sense. And then you have Binance F2 Pool via BTC, and then you have Luxor Tech. And in eighth place, you have Brain. So Luxor Tech Pool overall is about 30% larger than the likes of what you see with Brains. Um, and the overall miners that are connected, I think, is a bit skewed in this instance as far as uh, overall miners, this this may be overall, I don't know, accounts possibly uh, versus miners. That would make a lot more sense as to how this possibly is being reported. But there are about 90,000 or so uh, miners currently on Brains. I would presume it'd be probably well over 100,000 miners on Luxor Tech. Now, when it comes to first the overall uh, process of setting either of these firmwares up. It's very, very simple. Uh, both of these do require for a retail user uh, a micro SD card. Now, a micro SD card is very, very simple. And depending on the type of control board that you have, it does make a difference. Now, for this specific situation, both of the S19 Pros were both Xilinx boards. That means that the micro SD card was on the outside of the control board. And then you have two others specifically for the Ant Miner model. Uh, those are BeagleBone and you have AmLogic. Now, when it comes to the likes of What's Miner and some of the reasons that maybe if you have a, a What's Miner or Micro BT S19, one of the reasons you don't have a lot of firmware that supports it is because there's about 19 different type of models uh, for what's minor compared to just three for amp minor. So uh, if you're interested as to, well, why is there firmware for Bitmain and not firmware for what's minor? That is your answer. Now, with Luxor, they were of the two, the more recent to launch their firmware. Before, Luxor didn't have a firmware. All they had was a pool. Then they had a few other things that they provided as far as services to clients, whether that is um, their, their hosting aspect where they have connections to different hosting companies. They also provided a lot of derivatives. They You can see some of the things that they offer here um, as far as where you can buy and sell miners on their marketplace. There's a lot of unique things that Luxor does 
and did before getting into the firmware space. But having gotten into the firmware space, they've added a lot of features and they've made their mark in the overall quality of the firmware. So the biggest thing when it comes to turning on the, the process of taking the firmware and uh, transcribing it on a micro SD card uh, is, is fairly simple using Bellina Etcher to be able to put that firmware onto a micro SD card, plug it into the S19, ramp up the S19 is a very, very simple process. Um, there's really not a whole lot to that aspect, but that's where as soon as it powers up, that's where these two firmwares really split paths. And what I mean by that is when it comes to Luxor firmware, it takes about 30 minutes for it to go through the process of tuning each one of the chips on the hash boards. There's about 114 chips on the S19 Pro 110 terahash models, three hash boards. Now, in a comparison to Luxor, it takes brains a couple of hours at minimum to tune every single one of those chips. And obviously, uh, depending on the environmental standards or the environment that you may be in, if let's just say you are in a very hot environment, a process of bringing a miner all the way up, bringing a miner down, bringing a miner up, down, up, down, and testing the limits could be very extreme to a miner. And doing that over a consecutive several hours can obviously uh, be maybe not in the best interest of the ASIC. But with something like Luxor, this is definitely a huge positive for Luxor and something I was impressed with that the Luxor firmware actually tuned quite quickly, comparatively speaking. Now, when we jump into the firmware itself, uh, and once you actually start hashing, both of the kind of features that both of these offer is quite similar. And a lot of it really goes into of a preference kind of thing versus something that makes 100% a clear winner versus the other. Now, the biggest aspect of when you're actually mining is understanding what fees you're paying when it comes to mining. Now, with both of these, both Luxor and with Brains, you get a benefit if you use their firmware and you mine to their pool. If you go to uh, the likes of Luxor, you can see that for retail, if you use their pool and you use their firmware, you don't pay pool fees, but you do pay firmware fees, which stand at 2.8%. Now, if you go over to Brains, you'll see that their overall dev fees are 2.5% for the S19 model and zero pool fees on Brains pool. So in the end, both of these charge only the dev fee and no pool fees. But in this instance, Brains is a clear choice when it comes to cheaper fees 2.5% versus 2.8% so that when 100% definitely has to go to brains because it has less fees. It's just as simple as that. Uh, it's as simple as numbers. Now, the overall efficiency that both of these claim is an essence of an average around 20% or so. Uh, some some instances, depending on how you're overclocking things and certain things you're changing and the overall environment, whether you're in hot or cold, uh, could definitely play a role into some of this. But overall, by using firmware, regardless, you're going to get a better efficiency and, like I said, a little bit more bang for your buck when it comes to the firmware itself. Now, if we jump over to the both of the dashboards and just compare uh, the, the dashboards real quick between both of these. Now, brains I have currently in dark mode because it just looks way better in dark mode than light mode. Uh, and then Luxor, I don't even know if Luxor has a light mode, but these are the two dashboards between these two miners. I'm gonna refresh this real quick so you can just verify that this is the actual uh, miner currently online. And then the same thing here for the brains uh, from where you can see the miner currently online as well. Now let's talk about Luxor and one of the benefits when it comes to Luxor, and we'll talk about the dash each dashboard individually. Um, Luxor and, and some of the things that you'll see that's common. Uh, both provide each of the the fan speeds and have the customization to 
change fan speeds and completely turn off the fans if they go into immersion mode. So both have that feature. And additionally, the, the biggest kind of plus, if you will, or feature that some may like, uh, this is more of a preference thing, is you get a lot more features with the Luxor dashboard. You get to see a lot more things. So you get to see the voltage, you can see uh, the nominal hash rate, you can see the five minute hash rate, you can see the overall chips, how many are healthy, how many are unknown, how many are unhealthy. You can see the overall uh, temperatures based on the section of the hash board that you're looking at. So you can see some sections of the hash board are a little bit cooler than other sections, which is obviously a plus. And then you have the option that both have where you can uh, turn off one hash board or another if one's giving you issues and you want to continue mining. So overall, the, from a dashboard perspective, you've got a lot of good features. The nice thing is on the overall, the, the overview aspect, you can see both the terahash and you can see the overall uh, temperature alongside of the hot temperature, target temperature, and um, some of the other the aspects that you're looking at. Now, if you go jump over to the brain's overall uh dashboard and how you're looking at things there are a few things that that make uh brains definitely stand out so you've got if both offer efficiency both our show all the the primary details that you're probably looking for i don't know why i just highlighted that but um both offer the 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 big things that you're looking for right in maybe a little bit different spots but each one of these also have the board temps and they have the chip temps now here's the thing from what I'm guessing is on the Luxor firmware where you see this temperature, it doesn't show the chip temperature, it just shows the board temperature. So that's where I think this is showcasing this a little bit different. Like I said, it's more of a preference thing. The benefit to brains is it actually does show the temperature of the chips, which I think is a little bit more important than the actual temperature of the board itself. At least that's my opinion. And you can see a little bit of the, the different features as far as the voltage, uh, the frequency, not necessarily in the same place as you would see all this right here directly on the boards. I think the overall it's a layout thing maybe uh, compared to the to the other. Um, and, and that's pretty much most of it. I mean, you've got the temperature just like the other. The nice thing is with the Luxor, it's all within one dashboard. It's not three separate tabs. Uh, but in this instance with Brains, you do have a lot more detail when it comes to each one of these separate tabs. So like I said, it's more of a preference thing versus something that's definitely makes one better than the other. Just where that, that information is and where you're looking for it within both of these themselves. Now, when it comes to uh, repair and maintenance, this is a huge thing for a lot of, if you have a bad chip or you have uh, about control board, you kind of want to know where that chip is or, or what chip is malfunctioning. Um, and, and this is the benefit that you have with the likes of, and I think this is a huge plus to a uh, lecture compared to the likes of brains. With Luxor, you can see every single one of those chips. And if one of these chips was bad, it would be represented here. The contrast exists with the likes of the Brains firmware, the Brains OS Plus firmware, is that you don't have the ability to individually see the overall chips on each three of the control boards. It's not that big of a deal, but if you are a repair shop and you're wanting to see which board is having the bad chips, this is probably a very important feature for you to be able to have access to that. The stock firmware with Bitmain offers it as well. Not nearly as nice as what you have with Luxor, but something to be cognizant of between the two overall. Now, one of the, the things when it comes to resetting miners, and let's just say um, the power went out and you have to reboot your miner. Um, the process of getting the miners back on board from recognizing their prior firmware to running that firmware at 100% capacity is a big differentiating factor between Brains and Luxor. And in this instance, Brains definitely takes the win. In fact, it takes Luxor about 15 to 20 minutes to go through the entire process of checking the chips and going from unknown to 114 healthy chips. That same process takes brains about three to five minutes. 
Now, in the end, regardless of how long that process takes, you do still have both of the miners still hashing while that tuning process occurs. So it doesn't make that much of a difference in the end, but something to be aware of um, if you're restarting a Luxure firmware based S19 versus a brains based S19, it'll take an additional 10 to 15 minutes with Luxure to go through every single chip before it's fully recognized as healthy. Um, and like I said, with brains, it's about three to five minutes. Now, when I first started with brains, I think one of the most unique features is when you go into configuration and you go into performance, you can set your target hash rate. So for example, if I wanted to say, I wanted to reach this amount of terahash, it's going to configure the overall miner to reach that terahash at its best capabilities to be able to attain the best wattage, the overall consumption, overall efficiency standards based on the requested terahash that I'm looking for. And I can do the same thing when it comes to the power target. If, for example, I don't want to consume more than 3,500 watts, it's going to fine tune the S19 and then provide me the overall hash rate that is the most efficient for that power consumption. Now, this is a huge thing that really kind of initially turned me off about the Luxure firmware is that if you go to the preset profiles, you don't even know what hash rate you're possibly going to receive with your S19 Pro. All it is is default or the different options as far as the megahertz and voltage that directly then correlate into you receiving a unknown hash rate and an unknown power consumption. This is kind of the only thing that I think kind of threw me off initially and that was probably due to the fact that, well, I was familiar with being having the opportunity to choose what, what kind of power consumption or what amount of hash rate I wanted with brains. And I don't think that it's a bad feature. It would be nice to maybe have something within Luxor where it shows an estimated hash rate based on the model that you're connecting. I think that would definitely be a huge plus. It'd be an added feature that I personally would like. Maybe others saw this as well. But in this instance, you really don't know what you're going to get. Uh, it's kind of like opening up a Christmas present and you open it up and say, hey, congratulations, you're at 125 terahash at you know 27 uh, joules per terahash. In this instance with brains, you can go in, choose your power target, you can choose your hash rate target, and it makes life a little bit simpler, at least in my opinion. Both have the capabilities to do the same thing with the temperatures and the fans. You can choose the target temperature, hot temperature, dangerous temperature, uh, immersion mode, like I mentioned prior. And if you're wanting to control the fans, both have those features built in. And one of the biggest things that out of the launch of the Luxor firmware that the Luxor team was very proud of, and I, I definitely congratulate them for, is the ability to split hash rate. This is something very unique. It's a unique feature that Luxor added to their UI, to their overall operating software that you as an end user, if you wanted to say, let's just say, give Sally 10 terahash out of your miner to her pool um, so she can earn some Bitcoin, and that's really, really unique, and that's very exciting. And it's very, very simple to just simply go into your pool and be able to split it right then and there. Now, Luxor pr pridefully said that they were the first company to ever do this. Now, by all technicalities, they were not the first company to ever do this, as it is a feature that is available within Brains. Now, within Brains is called Boss Plus Toolbox. It's completely free, but you can download it and you can, through Boss Toolbox, effectively split hash rates uh, any way you want to within the toolbox. So that said, it is something extra. It does take a little bit more to be able to configure everything, but it does exist as a feature through Brains OS. So something to be aware of that, yes, I realize this is very good and there's a huge plus and it's very, very easy and user friendly, but I would venture to say Luxor is not technically the first ever to split hash rates. So something to just be uh, aware of and something I want to make mention uh, that Brains actually told me uh, about when I spoke with them as far as what they offer compared to the likes of Luxor. Now, the biggest thing that comes out of both of these specifically 
in the end is user friendliness and the overall features available within their dashboards on a computer. Now, a definite win in this instance is when it comes to phone applications, as many of us go directly to our phones to check maybe if a miner went down or, or something to that instance is, well, it's only Brains that offers a application for mobile where you can check your pool on the go. Luxure currently does not have any applications or mobile apps to be able to check or see updates. Uh, so that's not necessarily a huge turnoff, but it is an extra feature within Brains. But the biggest thing outside of all the features and all the extras and all the different unique things that are available within both of these firmwares and some of the fees that may be a little bit different is how well these actually work and how well in the end did both of these operate now probably one of the first things that you saw starting off was the overall hash rate power consumption and efficiency that you're seeing within the luxer firmware versus the brains firmware and it's quite different based on the ui now as you can see within the last five minutes the average hash rate has been 123 terahash and overall the last 15 minutes 100 and just shy of 123 just over 123 and a half now i haven't had this running for the full last 24 hours it's been testing on off on off um so this is the, the 24 hours is a bit skewed but overall it's about 123.68 terahash and you look at brains it ranges around 123 to 125 and you see the same thing with luxure now, the biggest differentiating factor at the second thing you look at is the overall efficiency and the power usage. Brains is using at about 3,750 watts based on the UI, based on what you see on the dashboard. And after testing the power consumption at the wall, it was almost on the money at 3,750 watts. So overall efficiency, in fact, is relatively close to the overall efficiency of the S19 stock versus the S19 overclocked. It's about 30 watts or 30 joules per terahash. Now, the one thing that I definitely did not like about Luxor is the overall power usage. It's not because the power usage is significantly less than the likes of Brains, but because the power usage of what it shows on the UI is drastically different than what the power consumption is at the wall. And I, I would say drastically as a form of exaggeration, but it's definitely not at 3,300 watts. In fact, it's more of about 3,500 to about a 3,550 watts at the wall. So this makes it appear on a first glance perspective that 26.68 joules per terahash is insanely good when it's actually a little bit less efficient than what it's actually stating. In the end, though, it does show with the Luxor firmware, you consume about 250 watts less than the same exact firmware you would possibly be running through Brains because this is the default firmware. Uh, if you go to the preset profiles of 575 megahertz, and to be able to, when I ran that, it came out at 123 to 125 terahash. Um, and I had to then go to Brains and then configure the miner to run 123 terahash. And out of those two configurations, you have one at 123 to 125 terahash running at about 3,500 watts with Luxor. And you have Brains at the same hash rate, but about 250 watts more of power consumption and therefore less efficient. So in the end, that really is all that matters. You can have all the features, you can have the mobile app, you can have a few things here and there that make your overall dashboard stand out, some of the features that stand out, but in the end, most people really care about how much Bitcoin are they stacking. And in the end, with Luxor, you would stack a little bit more Bitcoin if it comes to the point of not having to pay as much on electrical costs because you're consuming less energy. Now, that said, it will be offset slightly by a 0.3% higher uh, fee for the firmware itself. But in the end, that is 
not nearly as much compared to the energy savings of 250 watts on a daily basis. So something to be cognizant of, a big differentiating factor between the two. And in the end, we are going to be utilizing Luxor firmware for all of the operations for fracture mining and about 40 petahash of the project's operation alongside of the other partners that we have in fraction mining at our mining facility in Texas. So it's in the end, personally, when it comes to the firmwares, Luxor, and in my opinion, and this is my opinion only, is better than Brains. But that said, who knows that in six months, a year from now, uh, a new update comes from Brains and it's overall more efficient, more powerful than the likes of Luxor. You're going to constantly see updates. You're going to constantly see uh, new developments. But for the time being, in my opinion, Luxor definitely is a clear winner in this case. Uh, that said, both do offer support for other than just S19 Pros. They support S19 J models and S19 XPs. So that brings you up to speed with everything that I've been doing over the past couple of days, testing each one of these platforms, seeing which one is the most efficient. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Do you currently use one over the other? Are you going to switch over from one to the other based on some of the features that were discussed in today's video? Comment your thoughts down below. You enjoyed this video, smash up the like. You enjoyed this content, consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.